You're watching the Coaches Roundtable on the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. Welcome to Coach's Roundtable. I'm Ed Cody. Welcome our guest, the head coach of the Newcastle Red Hurricanes, Ralph Blundo. Ralph, congratulations on your seventh WPL championship and a milestone for the Red Hurricanes. 14th overall, you break a 13-13 tie with uh, Farrell. And by, by the way, as I talked to you the other day, uh, the greatest high school football coach in WPL history, maybe in the state, Phil Bridenball, you now tie him with seven WPL championships. That's pretty heady stuff at one school, two coaches with 14 WPL championships. When you hear all this, Ralph, what do you think about? Well, I actually think Brady has uh, a couple championships in basketball as well. Oh, um, right? I have to look at that and I believe he has one in track. I think his total is like 10, um, which obviously makes him, puts him in a class all by himself. Um, you know, I, I don't consider myself to be in the same class as those guys. I think some things are different. You know, we, we certainly have done some really great things, but with I think with the six classifications, it creates some more opportunities for us to to win some championships. And I certainly don't want to minimize what we've done. Um, but this has been a special run for for us here, Ed, and uh, and we're really proud of it. Uh, Ralph, your classification five A arguably. The best classification in the WPIL with, with, with you guys in Char Valley, Mars, Hi Highlands, and Laurel Highlands, that's a really tough classification. Yeah, I think the depth was incredible, and that's probably the biggest difference between 4A and 5A. I thought our section was really good last year in 4A. Got even better this year, adding Montour and Lincoln Park to that old section. And we moved up to 5A. Our section was good, um, obviously with Char Valley in it and South Fayette and West A and those teams. Um, but the depth outside of section, when you consider Penn Hills, um, Laurel Highlands, Mars, Latrobe, uh, Shaler, it was just incredible. Franklin Regional. I mean, there were teams, uh, Thomas Jefferson, uh, probably 10, 12, 13 teams that had enough ability to win it if they got on the right run. Um, so there were no easy games. Rob, let's look at your your uh, playoff games there with, um, the, first of all, Laurel Highlands, uh, the defending champs, and you deployed a different defensive strategy because of Rodney Gallagher. What, what was into your thinking about preparing for that game that you kind of pulled back and didn't play your usual uh, uh, pressure defense? Well, I mean, I think if you look back over the years, that that's – it's actually more typical to, of us than what people see. If you go back and look at our playoff games over the years, um, that's when you're going to see the best guards. Okay. And a lot of the stuff that we do defensively, um, when we're really pressuring all over the floor, it's, it's to, you know, ensure that maybe we don't lose to an inferior team. But when you play great guards, you can continue to pressure, but you got to be a little bit more cautious um, because, you know, guards it, it, uh, obviously win in high school basketball. And if you have good shooters on the back end, um, they could get lost in our pressure. Um, and then we don't get a body on a body. You know, we won a state championship of 14. That final score was 52-39. Um, we beat Abington the game before 57-54. Uh, beat North Allegheny the game before that, like 62-52. So, um you know, the farther you go along, the less impactful sometimes your pressure is. And we played great guards like Rodney Gallagher and Braden Reynolds. Um, we had to be more concerned about keeping those guys in front than allowing them to exploit our pressure and really kill us on the back end. Yeah, we did a great job against Reynolds. He scored 42 against you uh, uh, before, right? And then you did a great job against Char Valley in that championship game. During the regular season, you guys split each winning in, in double – 
digits, and then you played great defense against them in the championship game. What, what did what did you see from the when they beat you the second time by I don't know fifteen or seventeen points? What did you adjust to get ready for them in a championship game? Obviously, honestly, we we didn't do anything different than our first two games. The only thing that was different in the second game, and I don't want to discredit how well they played that night, um, is that I didn't feel like we played. I didn't feel like we competed. Uh, probably one of the first times in and uh, you know in the three hundred games that we coached, especially especially against you know in a in a high level game like that. That was that we were playing for the section championship that night. Uh, we were undefeated. They had one loss, and they were coming to our place. And we had beat them by 30 at third place. And I just didn't feel like that night, for whatever reason, the pandemic, we were unfocused, didn't have two great days of practice, that we didn't get after them. So I just thought, you know, of course, I was thinking about changing some things, but I really thought at that point, that maybe we ought to, maybe, maybe we ought to just do what we do better than we did on that particular night. Um, and I think we did that in the championship game. Hey, Rob, let me talk about some of your players early in the season and through that. You had a one-two punch there with Sheldon Cox and, and Michael Wells that both averaged in, in double figures. And then along came a sophomore for you, Isaiah Bruce. What a great job he did. And he, he seems to be a little guy, what, 5'10", 136, 5'11". It's not a big team for you, Cox and, uh, and Wells, both 6'3". Uh, so they gave you three guys who were scoring in double figures for you late in the season and through the playoffs. Yeah, we've actually had games where we had six guys in double figures this year. We've had really good balance all year. Michael and uh, Michael and and Sheldon obviously have led the way, but Isaiah, you know, he made seventy threes last year. He averaged thirteen a game last year and has done the same or a little bit more this year. And then Michael Graham has really, really come along. And then of course the play of uh, of Donnie K down the stretch, um, our five man just really, really getting more and more comfortable in what he's doing down there has helped us to um, really improve as a team. But I think in general, our balance has been pretty good all year, Ed. Hey, Ralph, every, every team has its own personality. How does this team differ from the other six uh, WPL champions that you coached? How, how would you characterize this team? They're different. Yeah, they're different. Um, they're good athletes. I mean, but they're good athletes in different ways. Um, they're not the same um, style of athlete as say a Marcus Hooker, or Malik Hooker, or, or um, Geno Stone. But they're um, they're long. Um, they're gritty. Um, they're probably not as effective in the with the full court pressure as some of my of my past teams, but effective nonetheless. Um, but they really shoot it well. Uh, it's a very confident team. Uh, they believe in, in themselves and what we're doing. Um, you know, we've had games. This year, we had a game this year where we made 23s in a game. at. Um, so they have the ability to really get hot. Um, so we, And we can score in a variety of ways. It's probably one of my the best offensive teams that I've coached. I would say the 13 team was the best offensive team that I coached. Um, the 17 team and 14 team were right there with the 12 team, but this team right here is is in that mix. Okay, Ralph, you get ready for the state playoffs. You know, coaches always say they worry after you win a WPL championship. Coming out that first game in the state playoffs, you're always concerned about your team getting refocused. Do you know who you're going to play? We'll play the winner of Cathedral Prep and, and Du Bois and we talked about that last night of films, you know, just that, you know, year after year, um, someone from the WPL gets knocked out in the first round by maybe a team they shouldn't get knocked out by. Um, I'm not saying that would be the case with us in Cathedral or, or, or Du Bois, um, but because they really uh, have the inability or maturity to bounce back from the, the high that they were on after such an emotional WPL championship happens all the time. But this year's really unique I mean I told our guys you'll never get a chance in your lifetime quite like this um, I think it's a prestigious tournament the PIA this year because to, to get in you have to win your district so it's a tournament of champions so to speak um, and there's only eight teams in it so it wasn't easy to get to get here but on top of that um, you know we're going to get a home game in the quarterfinals of the states I mean that's unheard of um, you know and if you can play somehow you know, 
eight good quarters, four quarters at a time, you can find yourself at Hershey. And um, so I wanted them to see the possibilities, but to continue to focus on this process here. Hey, Ralph, th thanks for joining us. Good luck to you and the Red Hurricanes as you are in pursuit of your second state championship. Thanks, Ed. I appreciate you having me. Okay, take care. I'll be right back with Alan George. High school sports, community events, all of your favorite local shows are calling the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel their home. Find out everything your neighborhood has to offer on Channel 100 or on YouTube. Spirit, town pride, local communities. This is the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. I am back, joined to my right by the Swami George Abraham, to my left by the Tiger Albert Campman. We'll talk more about our interview, my interview with Ralph Blundo when we get to basketball. Let's start off with uh, PIAA Wrestling Championships. Seneca Valley's Alejandro Herrera Rondon won his third straight state title in the 152-pound class. The Oklahoma recruit finished this season 39-0. He was named the outstanding tournament wrestler. Uh, what a career he's had and headed to one of the best schools in the country for wrestling in Oklahoma. Well, that last line right there is what tells me how good he is. You know, a lot of people say, this kid's good, this kid's good. If you're going to wrestling for, uh, to Oklahoma, <laughs> that means you're great. Uh, Dylan Chappell, Seneca Valley second in a 132-pound class, his third state silver medal to go along with three WPL gold. He's headed to Bucknell University. And sophomore Tyler Chappell, he took third place in a 106-pound class. Cole Spencer of Pine Ridge in third in a 160-pound class. Dawson Dietz of Hampton, he took seventh in a 285-pound class. And in 2A wrestling, Eli Reese of Knock, fourth in a 215-pound class. PIAA Diving Championship, 2A girls, sophomore Maggie Foley of North Catholic, she placed second. And in 3A girls diving championships, sophomore Christine Shy of North Allegheny, she was a gold medal winner. In bowling, Butler freshman Kelsey McConnell. She qualified for the state tournament and the Freeport girls won the West Division team championship. Julia Cummings led the Yellow Jackets with a 237 game and in hockey Brody Simcoe Butler he had four goals. Basketball top scorers Levi Orton AC Valley closes out his career with 32 points. Joseph Roth of Elwood City 30. Maddox Clement of Butler 28. Alexander Roth of Elwood City 24. Both of them be getting ready here also for swimming championships this coming weekend at Bucknell. Sheldon Cox of Newcastle, 24 and 23. Nathan Waltman of Carn City, 22, 1,000 career points for the big guy. J uh, Joey Dudkowski of Pine Ridge, 22. Andrew Zimmerman of North Catholic, 21 and 35. And Devin Carney of Butler, 21. Michael Wells of Newcastle, 20. For the girls, Alexis Robinson of Rochester, 29 and 33. Lizzie Gresh of North Allegheny, 24. Liz Russell of Rochester, 24. Dominique Logue of Union, Rymersburg, 24, and 1,000 career points. Ashton Pry of Montauk, 23. Corianne Hauser of Rochester, 21. And Anna Kandlubik of Slippery Rock High School, 21. Let's go to our basketball uh, championships games. The boys, Corn City, 67. Powder Sport 65. The Gremlins overcame a 14 point deficit to win the District 9 2 8 championship, led by Nathan Waltman's 22 and Chase Bailey's 19. Next for Carn City 22 and 2, they take on District 5 champ Connemon Township at Carn City this week. What a year for Carn uh, City. The boys won the district championship in football and now this basketball championship. Well, the community really surrounds sports there. We, we've been to football games. And, and Great atmosphere. You understand that that, that is a, that's a big thing when the legacy is passed down to your parents, grandparents, neighbors, whatever. Carn City really cares about sports. And a WPI All 6A championship game. Upper St. Clair 56, Pine Richland 53 in a hard-fought game. The first title for Upper St. Clair since 2005. It's the third under coach uh, Dan Holzer. Pine Richland finishes 14 and 6, but uh, this is their fourth title game in six years, and they return four starters for next year. Yeah, that's, that's no surprise. We've seen that forever also. And in 5A, Newcastle 61, Chartiers Valley 45, Sheldon Cox with 21, the seventh WPL title for Coach Ralph Blundo, the 14th for Newcastle. They break a tie with your Farrell Steelers 13-13 in the WPL 
And the other thing I was talking to Ralph about, he, he's tied with um, Phil Bridenball with uh, seven WPL championships and Bridenball won in football. But he told me Bridenball won a couple in basketball and won in know track that. too. I didn't know that. He has about 10 all together. So uh, for, for Ralph, he's one behind Eddie or, uh, Johnny Miller with eight and Eddie Oz Okowski with eight. And, of course, at the top of the pyramid is your great coach, Eddie McCluskey, with 11. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and I, I don't like talking about it because Farrell did it at the top classification every year. And yeah. See, so I, I, it's, yeah. Not a, it's, it's, it's something, so my, it, it, it's it's something in my heart that I can't right. feel. Right, and it. you should feel that way. You understand? When you yeah, do top absolutely. classification, uh, right. like I know, I talked to George last night. You understand how great Altoona was? And if Altoona played in 4A or something, they'd have 16. So, it, it's, you know, when, you're, when you play different classifications, it is major difference to me. I know Ralph does a great job, and I know Newcastle does a great job. I'm not talking. I'm just talking. That's why I rate McCluskey right. higher. And, and, and <laughs> you're right. And in, in, in those days, I can remember when Ed Heapy did a great job at Butler. He was good friends with Aiden McCluskey. He'd go 15 and seven, 16 and six, finish second, and no playoffs. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's you, you, had a, you had to win a section title. I don't go for this home floor stuff in the inner district. I get your district. Right. There's no possible way they can't find a spot in the middle to play that game. Shouldn't be that many fans either way, but they're enough to pay security. Uh, I, I would agree with you. Yeah. They had a mob there at, at a Saturday night. And you know they will. Did you see the crowds? No, I did not. You wouldn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, in 4A, uh, Lincoln Park uh, defeated North Catholic 66 to 57, and uh, Andrew Ammerman, he had 35 in North Catholics, 57 points. Very improved. I, I love to see kids who start here and then get to here. That kid has really jumped his level. Congratulations. He has had, he's had to work hard on his game to do something like that. And in 3A, let's give a hoorah out for I, the Elwood City Wolverines. They win, their, outfit. they win their first ever WPL championship, 53 to 50 over South Allegheny. No details in the game. It's the first uh, title game for Elwood City since you were the head coach in, what, 1986 when you lost 71-70 to yeah. Blackhawk in a tremendous game. I'm sure you still – you've never yeah, forgotten a one-point loss yeah, back then. Yeah, but, well, well, last night there was a balance scoring. That, you know, the Ross always leave, but then Tuano came through. And Gibbons, Gibbons and, and Milo Sesti are, are both great role players. They know their, their roles. They, they gain confidence going in. And uh, what a great tribute to Coach Antuano and that team for winning. And congratulations to the Wolverines. Albert, are you feeling old? Antuano, the coach, was seven years old when you were in that, <laughs> that championship game. In well, I know I'm old. I know I'm old. I don't feel old. I know I'm old. Hey. <laughs> He was just a kid coming to our camp. And, <laughs> I mean, honestly, I'm not kidding. He was just starting out in coaching. I told him, don't you dare go to Wilmington. I said, you'll never get another job. <laughs> so much for what I know. Hey, now, now let me ask you, how are Alexander and Joseph Ross going to handle the swimming championships of Bucknell plus the state playoff games in basketball? How, they make it work. How's this going to work out? They make it work. And this they one's going to be tough. And they made this it, going to be hard, right? And they, made, and they made it work all, all, all along. You know, when, you're, when you – on the day of a, of a day, day of a championship game, you're swimming two hours before the yeah, game. Yeah, but the, it's the distance. Oh, I get it. I get now it. you're adding Lewisburg yeah. to the equation. I know. I, I don't know how they're going to do Yeah, they'll make, they'll make it work. Is I don't it know how it's going to happen. I think the WPL will be able Most teams are getting a home uh, – in the quarterfinals, I think you get a home game. I'm not sure how – I don't know if they get a home game or not. I don't know but that. But I'm saying it'll make a difference. Oh, oh. Lewisburg. Yeah, it's going to be tough. But the, um, I'm guaranteeing they'll be there. And Chestnut okay. Ridge isn't They'll exactly. be at both places. And Chestnut Ridge isn't next to Lewisburg either. They'll be both places. All right, in 2A, uh, Olsh 71, uh, Greensburg Central Catholic 52 for Olsh 21 and 0. Oh, they become the 10th team in the WPL history to win three straight WPL championships. And in a 1A, uh, Bishop Canavan 42, Rochester 27. Uh, the five losses for Bishop Canavan were all to higher classification teams. And, and let me say this about Rochester, guys. They finished 14 and 5, made the championship game. Last year, they were 0 and 21. Yeah, um, I've watched them play both years. And uh, the, the, kids, the kids put a lot of effort in to what's going on. But in, but in single A, if you, if, you put, if you put that effort in and get better, except for a team like Canavan. <laughs> You can make it there. You can right. get there. There's only 16 teams. Yeah. Isn't like you know, there isn't like there's 
you can get through 40 teams. Single A's at 16 or 18 in the classification. So you, so for schools watching, it can be done at any time. But the six classifications, you can you can get it done by hard work. Well, well let me ask you guys this: with with the Canes move from uh, 4A to 5A, they keep winning. What are the chances they're going to bump them into into 6A because they're short of teams there? It's like Butler's well, it's not, section only like has five team. teams. It's the success factor. Yeah, you know, and, and, and it's the amount of transfers plus the success factor. I'd say they're good five one more year, and then I don't know the exact thing for the success factor, but. If they go to the state, they're going to be. Have they ever done it in basketball? Successful? I don't know that football. Well, yeah, well, they do Lincoln, it all the time. Lincoln. Yeah. Sure. Well, Lincoln had to move up. Is yeah. that why they moved up? Yeah. yeah. I thought they. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I yeah, that's what I happened. Know. That's what happened. Then. Okay. All right. Let's go to girls' championship game. Six A. North Allegheny seventy. Upper St. Clair thirty six. The second Ooh. straight championship for the Tigers. Alyssa Gresh, who's ahead of the pen, she had twenty four. And uh, Paige Morningstar. She had 16. She's a volleyball star. She could play Division I basketball, too. For North Allegheny, it's their seventh straight championship game and fifth title in the last seven years. It's not stopping. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> no. They, they, the, the coach, uh, Spencer Stefko, has done a tremendous job for him. It's his ninth straight championship game. That's what I said. It's not stopping. <laughs> and and in 5A, uh, Trinity had the tables turned on them by Chartier's Valley. I thought this was going to be a dogfight. Chartier's Valley blew out Trinity 62 to 40. So brother turns the table on sister in this championship game. Well, I watched the game, and I made the statement right away. I have no idea why Char how Chartier's Valley lost to them the first time. <laughs> Chartier's Valley has four Division One players playing, that are that are tremendous players. They have a great coach. I have no idea how they lost. Because I watched the game, they're 20 points better anytime they play. I, I, it was a, give Trinity credit for beating them during the regular season. I don't know how it happened. And in 4A, uh, undefeated Beaver 20 and 0, 45, Quaker Valley 29, and in 3A Mohawk, they win their second straight title, 54 to 48 over North Catholic. Dacia Lewandowski had 16 for the Trojanettes. Uh, they'll be back next year. The, all, all five starters return. And in 2A, Nishanik 54, Sarah. 44, the first loss of the season for Sarah Catholic. Nishanik, 17-2, their second title in the last three years under Coach Luann Grabowski, who had a great run at Newcastle. Absolutely. And in 1A, uh, Rochester, they win their second straight, 71-41 over West Green. Yeah. Now we're on Rochester to, has two really good Oh, they're players. loaded. They, they, yeah, they're really they're just, they have Alexis, two really good guards. Yeah, so really yeah good. Alexis Robinson oh, really and Corian Hauser. Yeah. 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 Both of them are two, they, they, Now, both, last year, were they still going, or did they get knocked off in the first two rounds? In the state? Yeah. No, yeah, they canceled remember. the state, remember? Well, they played two, though. They I don't didn't. remember. They I, I, don't, I don't remember what happened. Because I was at the game right before Bellwood and Laurel. Some teams didn't play any state games at all. They They chose. Yeah, yeah. They chose. Mount Lebanon chose. All right, and in District 10, he talk about a tough loss. District 10, 5A championship. Warren, 40. Slip Rock High School, 39. Emma Roman of Warren made three free throws with no time left on the clock to defeat Slippery Rock. Yeah, tough. Well, that's not a tough loss. That's a devastating loss. Devastating. And I want to see the play. Because why what happened? Would, why would you foul a three? That's one of the cardinal rules in the game of basketball. Never foul. A three-point shooter. I, I, I like to see that. I have to, I'm going to look that play up. I'm going to look on YouTube and try to hunt that play down. Well, George, remember we, we did a, a Butler Seneca Valley yeah. game, and, and the, the same thing happened there with uh, a Butler down by what uh, three, and uh, they they fouled the, the shooter and the act well, th well, th well, three well, points, and they, they tied it up. When play. It, they were playing the foul on purpose. Right when the guy came out, it he heaved it from half court, and they gave him three. Gotcha. This is a home court game, so. You know, I know Subbarock had to go to Warren, so I would be – I hope it was a foul. That's all I'm saying. I hope it was but a you, 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 foul. You, you guys always say, you know, foul them before they get to the half court. Well, not up two. Not up two, you can't. Yeah. No, no, when you're up, yeah. when you're oh, up absolutely. three. Absolutely. When you're up three. So two games, 30, oh, believe That believe game was 39-37. Yeah, at that point. Three. Yeah. And I, Saturday I saw two games that one team fouled and one the other team didn't and lost. And I'll give kudos to Warren. For making the three free throws. Yeah, kid. You understand? The a pressure. high school kid going up there and hitting all three right. free throws. Yeah, three. Yes. Absolutely. Man, uh, if you got any timeouts left, you got to make her walk uh, there three times. 
For Slipper Rock, 16 and 4. Anna Kadlubik had 21 points. Now, our stories of the week. You talk about a red hot team. It is the Pittsburgh Penguins. They took a five game winning streak into the game against the Boston Bruins. Beat the Bruins 4 to 1. The resurgent play of Geno Malkin. Uh, Malkin had a goal and an assist. Crosby had a goal and two assists. The Pens now, in their last seven games, they've averaged at least three goals a game. Tristan Jari. In goal, 42 saves and 43 shots. We are at the halfway point. The Pens are 18-9-1 and, one and yes. rolling. I don't get excited this way or this way. I told you until the very end. That's that's why I'm with hockey. So I'm now, getting excited now. <laughs> hey, he, playing. Crosby made a shot. Like, I, oh. it, how it went in, I have no idea. He was almost behind the net. And he put some kind of spin on it or Ter something. Sickery he put I don't on know it. how he made it. it the, the goalie had to be thinking it's hitting the post. And... He snuck it in there. Amazing. Hey, good news. Major League Baseball, Morris High School grad, part relief pitcher David Bednar keeps making a statement that he's going to be part of this uh, bullpen. He has pitched five shot-out innings with 10 Ks during spring training Ooh. games. Well, when you go to spring training, that's where you make your name on a team like the Pirates because they're looking for players, and that kid has done it, so yeah. hope, hope he makes it. Yeah, normally they – it, the teams that have the roster. Yes, stuff. yes. Like the Yankees, they're not watching. So they're golfing. Yeah. But <laughs> this kid can make the team. Which the, would, the Yankees are blue. Boy, 10 strikeouts in five innings. I mean, what do they want? Hey, college basketball, the NCAA uh, tournament is going to be held in the bubble there at Indianapolis. Uh, the, your, your four top seeds, Gonzaga out of the west, uh, Baylor out of the south, Illinois the midwest, Michigan in the east. Uh, Gonzaga 26-0, looking to become the first NCAA undefeated champion since Indiana in 76. How about the NCAA? I said, here's, here's the rules. All you need are five healthy players. You don't even need your head coach if he's sick. Let him assistant <laughs> coach. So you know what's pushing this, that $800 million. There are a million reasons. Gorilla. <laughs> they all have George Washington's it. picture on Hey, Rick Pitino, he takes Iona 12-5. and five. They win a conference championship. The fifth team, a record he has taken to the NCAA tournament. Let's say this, though. Most guys take over teams that are bad. Yeah. That coach got sick. They won it last year. Okay. Not that I'm taking anything for Pitino. Right. His record speaks for itself. But that team won last year, and the coach got sick. We're going to find out if Indiana, Indiana has any scruples. Because if, if they if they don't, he's there. I would have Patino there instantly. That's what he, the, he said. He's staying at Iona after Indiana. Oh, did he say that? He said that. Well, I didn't see Indiana, that. Indiana okay. Oh, Park. wait a minute. <laughs> he said <laughs> he that. He word, said huh? he's going to finish his I career trust at his Iona. What he said? I wouldn't trust oh, his word. Yeah. Yeah. No. Hey, <laughs> and uh, Indiana fires Archie Miller. Four years, no tournament appearances. They he lost the last six games of this uh, season. You go to Indiana, there, there's no, uh, we'll give you two or three years to rebuild. They're, they're like, they have not won since Bobby Knight left. That well, tells no, you right no, there. No, 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 no. Mike Davis won one time right there. Won expectations. Pretty, pretty, it's the expectations. That's what's gotten them there. They, see, they are in a time work there where they think every kid in Indiana wants to go to Indiana. That's, now, yeah. there was a time. When that happened. When yes. it did. It's like Notre Dame, Michigan football, name it. They're still great programs, but kids don't just want to go there. Right. And Indiana does not understand that. He got $10 million to leave, so he'll find some. Hey, and at, at Pitt, the third Pitt player enters the transfer portal, sophomore forward, uh, Gerald Drumgooley. He has left. So that, that's another blow to the Pitt program. And Penn State hires uh, Purdue assistant coach Micah Shrewsbury as their new head coach. Make a difference? No. No, <laughs> uh, and, and, giving them a chance. No, no, Penn State is just a so-so. That's in basketball. That's all it's ever going to be. Pitt, it, it happens to be a local team, but they're in dis, they're in more disarray at Pitt than any, any they're team in, in the downward country. Spiral. Any team in the country, yeah. you don't see this happening. I gave you the record. Last no week. scholarship, no, yeah. zero they're, scholarships, they're, yeah. and losing six players. Yeah. They, 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 Twenty some losses in February. Then, like yeah. we said on here, forty-seven, ninety-seven, and in, 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 in and the we ACC. said it on here. Most schools, the lousy guy, like this last guy that left, he averaged 1.2. The other two at left averaged 27 points. Hey, we have so much to talk about. New ESPN deal for hockey and what's going on with football and the big money. The, the, the difference is, is astonishing and a lot to talk about what's going on with the Steelers. We'll see you next week.